Hey everyone, it's Ross, and in today's video, I want to update you guys on a couple things. We're just going to walk around the yard and give you guys a nice little update on very specific things. I'm going to try to keep this shorter and not make this more into a tour. I really want to update you guys on a few things that we just haven't looked at in a while. And I want to let you guys know that these things still exist in the yard. <laughs> we are still growing them. You can see over here the pomegranates are flowering actually really well. I'm happy to see it. I haven't seen too much of it set yet. We are hand pollinating these. Every day I come out here and hand pollinate these the best of my ability because um, I think the birds, or the bees, I'm sorry, just really don't know what they're doing. Um, it's just a foreign thing to them in this area. And some people are like, oh, well, they pollinate just fine in my area. I don't have to come. Well, you don't live in Philadelphia, so um, they're not really supposed to be growing here. But that's what we're doing today and every day. We come out here and just check on those pomegranates. I also want to update you guys on the citrus. We have some citrus here that we unboxed. We got them in the mail from Four Winds. And they're actually putting out nice growth. You can see that this is nice and new growth up here. Also on this limb over here. Um, these are new limes, lime quats. Some of them have flowered when I received them and actually are putting out fruit. They've set their fruit now. We also grafted this guy over here, which has been one of my citrus trees for a couple years, and it just hasn't done well. So we grafted a new variety onto it, and I don't think these grafts have taken. That's what the tin foil is. This one over here broke. Uh, I think it's just not gonna work out. Maybe uh, I can try again very soon. Uh, maybe I did it too early in the season, who knows. But um, I also wanna give you guys an update here on the Morris Niagara Mulberry. We're gonna come in here very soon because these are gonna be ready. We're gonna do a separate video. They're actually red right now, and I'm just waiting for them to turn black. They take quite a bit, it seems like, for them to turn to turn color. Um, so, interesting plant. We're gonna talk a lot about those. We also have, by the way, these jujubes here. These guys are going nuts. Um, I remember in other years, if you guys look at tours and other videos I've done on these jujubes, is that this is really when they start waking up. It's June 11th and they're already fully grown pretty much. They put out tons of flowers. If I get in here real close for you guys, I can show you the flowers. I mean, look at that. Man, that's tough to focus on. Let's see if I can get you guys a better shot here. There we go. So. Yeah, they're putting out nice flowers right now. I think they put out male and female flowers, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but they're doing really well. I'm just really shocked to see them this far progress. And I think the whole reason for that, this is probably a better angle here now that we're not in the sun. But there you go. See all these flowers on these branches here, guys? That looks beautiful, doesn't it? Um, the jujube, by the way, is becoming one of my favorite fruits, but the whole reason why they have gotten a nice head start is because we've had them here on the patio with no straw on them. Normally what we had done in the past is we had all of our potted fig trees, not potted fig trees, potted uh, fruit trees here, like you know our stone fruits, our apples, our pears, our jujubes, our che. We have them all piled up here. We pack them with straw and that keeps them warm throughout the winter time so I don't have to put these potted plants somewhere else. But this year we just put them directly on the patio, took off all that straw, and I think that straw actually helped warm up the soil earlier. And now these guys are doing phenomenal. And the same thing goes with my che here. This tree though has been an overall downer for just a long time. Every video I've ever done on this thing it just is a huge disappointment about how the fruit, it sets so much fruit. You can see there's fruit all over this damn thing, everywhere, everywhere I look. Um, this is just what it does, guys. And then it seems like, for whatever reason, it just drops. There seems to be a pollination issue that a lot of growers either disagree or agree on that it does need pollination or it doesn't need pollination. Essentially, it's just a huge letdown every year, but this year it seems like 
the fruits have swelled to a larger size, a different color that I've never seen before. Similar to the fig, because it is related to the fig, it is related to the mulberry. Similar to the figs and how they get to a larger size and then they stay stagnant for a while. The same thing has happened here with the che. Um, and that they get to a certain size, they stay stagnant, and then they sit there. But I think at this point, I've never really seen this point here. So this is a win. I think this is a win that I've never seen. I don't know if they're gonna fruit, but I am gonna update you guys if they ever do. And um, yeah, I think that's just what I wanted to mention about those particular trees there on the patio. Um, we've also got just about every fig in the ground now. There's about 70 varieties, 70 trees in the ground of figs. It's looking beautiful, it's looking great. A lot of these young trees are getting a lot of growth to them. I would say by September, this is gonna be a nice little jungle here. I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna look a bit insane. Uh, we're gonna try to protect them as the best we can this winter time for these young trees. We've also got a lot of flowering plants that are finally coming through, finally doing something um, in this little area here. We put in some bronze fennel, we put in some lavender, we even have a Roman chamomile down in here. We've got things like, uh, what are these things? I forget the name of this. But again, just to make this whole area a bit more beautiful, attract the bees. Um, our garden beds, I wanna talk about the garden beds really quickly here, guys. The tomatoes are just insane. I mean, there's a lot and there's a whole video I did just on the tomatoes, but they are incredible. This one up here is already over five feet tall. It's only June 11th. And you can see the uh, tomatoes down here on this particular variety have formed. It's looking nuts. Also, the corn here I wanna talk about is that there's corn that I planted. We direct seeded this very recently. It's coming up, it, it's looking good. I probably need to give a nice little feed to this area, but historically I've not done well with corn, guys. Um, I don't know what it is, but the corn just doesn't pollinate well. I've tried uh, different spacings. I've tried to put them together. I've tried to put them further apart. I've tried to get as many of these corn plants in here that I can. If anybody has any information on if this really is going to work, I mean, this is a long shot, I know, because there's just not a whole lot of room here. You know, this is like a three foot by three foot space, maybe even less. This is like two foot this way, and this is three foot down to this portion here. This is again, six square feet right here. You know, I don't think this is enough corn. And if it's not, I kinda wanna figure that out now rather than wasting my time. Um, you know, I could, I guess, put something else in there in those positions. We also have corn in here, and I'm gonna come in here today and take a lot of this cool loving stuff out. A lot of the, um, the lettuces that are in here, we're gonna harvest all of this leave the carrots in. There's also some turnips and radishes and stuff in here that we're also gonna harvest and pickle, I think. But uh, that's the goal, is to get the heat going in this area right here. We've got the melons in. The melons look great. And here's the issue with the melons, or the little solution that we did here. And this is the last point I wanna mention about some of the annuals here. Actually, you know what? I forgot about the artichokes. Look at how good these artichokes look, guys. These are the green globe artichokes that fruit in one year that can survive in a zone seven climate. You can perennialize them here just by protecting the base. The same thing is going on behind it. Guess what this is right here? That is some sugar cane, guys. We planted our sugar cane horizontally in this bed back here. And uh, this is the first shoot to come up. And I'm really excited because we're gonna also be able to perennialize sugarcane here the same way. Protect the base, we'll get a nice harvest every year. It's gonna be glorious here, guys. But the, the melons, what we had done, is we started some of our melons actually indoors about April 1st, transplanted them out May 1st. They sat in here not doing anything. The soil was too cold, we had sugar snap peas growing in this area and they were shading these guys out. I was, I actually thought they might die. I didn't think they were gonna do well. They didn't really transplant well. They were maybe too big when I transplanted them. The soil was too cool. We probably needed to feed them. 
But what I ended up doing was actually starting a flat about mid-May. And we started a flat of these different varieties here that I wanted to grow. And then we transplanted them out June 1st. And since June 1st, they put out some nice growth. They've transplanted perfectly, which is really great to see. Um, so worst case scenario is that the one that we transplanted out earlier, if they don't get off to the greatest start, we have a nice little backup. Um, and that I think was the whole goal with these musk melons and the cantaloupes that were growing, all heirloom varieties, by, guys, by the way. The peaches are doing phenomenal. I just want to mention this real quick, is that these peaches are putting out nice sized fruit. They're getting nice color, but they have been dropping some fruits still. Even after we thinned about, I'm not kidding, like 500 fruits off of these two trees. They are still dropping some fruits. They're rejecting some fruits. And I think it's just because there was just too many on here, guys. Um, and I'm seeing actually a lot less on the Alberta peach than the Red Haven. So maybe something had happened specifically to the Alberta. Uh, maybe it's just one of them years that uh, there's just too many fruits on the tree. Uh, maybe we had too many last year. I don't know, guys, but uh, the Red Haven is loaded still. And I'm looking forward to having many, many peaches. All right, let's continue here, guys. The potatoes, by the way, this is the German Butterball. They've really taken over this area. I dedicated a lot of space to these guys. They're growing really well, I have to say. Some of them are even flowering now, and I think this could be a sign with this variety, I have to look it up, that we're getting close to harvest. I think I may even want to take these flowers off because I think that's stealing some of the energy away. Um, I'll have to look it up with this specific variety, what that exactly means. Uh, we also have, and here's a big disappointment this year, the grapes, they're looking beautiful, they're growing beautiful, but the fruit set on the Mars grape here in the middle, which is the oldest vine, is next to nothing. Um, it is just an absolutely gorgeous vine though. And I think because we had such a high fruit set last year, maybe this year it's just taken a hit as a result. And all the flower clusters that had formed are now gone. You can see them all shriveled up right here. That's a bit disappointing to see, but you know, it is what it is. See the one back in there. You can see the one right here. It's just, it just is what it is. There's not like it's a complete loss because there is one right here, but um, the variety right next to it, this one's called, I think, Himrod. And you can see a giant cluster of grapes. <laughs> right there so there's definitely some clusters on these vines don't get me wrong look at that <laughs> but i was really hoping that this was going to be a big year for harvesting these grapes um but you know it is what it is we also have by the way the muscadine grapes we planted this year they're doing perfectly fine they're putting on some growth the apple trees i guess i should update you guys actually do have some small apples on them. I will get a taste of some apples if I can protect them. Last year, the squirrels picked them off the trees when they were a bit unripe. You can see how beautiful this row here looks. And we have got a second row down here, just filled with comfrey. Um, and I really need to come in here and weed all this out because this is just, this grass is coming back strong. And I have not had time to come in here and weed anything. So um, it's, it's not looking good in terms of how much work I'm going to have to put in, but it is what it is. We also have quite a bit that went to seed finally in the cool oven crop bed. I need to come in here and I want to make a nice salad. I'm going to come in here and really harvest quite a bit. Again, take out a lot of the turnips, a lot of the radishes and pickle a lot of that stuff. You can see more of the apples on these young trees that we just transplanted in the ground this year. It's kind of really awesome to see the Gumi. I still got fruit on it and uh, I can pretty much take the, uh, I could take the net off of this. The birds are just not bothering it. It seems like if you go over here, well, actually, yeah, they are because I'm not seeing any of the Gumi now on this particular bush. So the birds clean this one out. So maybe I should leave that on, but this fruit guys is a big hit. It was a big hit at Bass's fig gathering last weekend. I brought uh, quite a bit for people to try and people loved it. Um, there was very few that just didn't like it at all. And uh, 
I would say, you know what, there was probably half the people there thought it was really interesting, thought it was something they would want to grow. A lot of people ask me, can I, can I grow this from seed? Can you send me cuttings? Um, you know, so there was an overwhelmingly good response out of people that like figs and like good fruit. Um, also, the pawpaw. Look at this. Look at the pawpaw, guys. This is insane. Um, I can't believe it. It's finally their year, guys. We've been saying it for years. This is finally the year that they've started to grow. And they say by year seven, you'll get some fruit if you plant them by seed. And now we're in year four with these, and they're finally growing. I imagine because they are grafted, next year we'll probably get some flowers off of them and get some fruit by year five. Let me take you guys over here. You know what? Mmm, that gumi was good. By the way, look at this American persimmon. It's just loaded. There's flowers all up and down this on every limb. This is the perfect tree. It hasn't grown all that much. It's the perfect spot, I think, for it. Perfect soil fertility. There's very little fertility there. It's put out so much fruit and such little growth. I think that's really what you want with those. Um, I wish my Rosianca did that because that tree is massive. It's just getting too big here, guys. What else do I want to update you guys on? Remember we did a video on, you know, observing your landscape and paying attention to your trees? Well, this pear tree, we had cut out a limb. It turns out, I think the entire tree has, uh, has fire blight. If I come back in here, I know it's very difficult to see. I can't even really see it right now, guys, but from about here all the way up is fire blight, which means we got to cut out the whole tree and pretty much start over from new. And uh, I think I'm going to do that today is cut out all that growth and dispose of it in the trash. But the other pairs here are looking nice. We took the net off and try to bag as many of these as we could. This is just too much fruit set probably on this branch here. I may thin this out and also stake that branch to get it growing vertically again. Um, but the pears are looking good. We have very few stone fruits. I got to try, holy hell guys, there's a nice little bumblebee on my shoulder. Can you see him? Hope you guys can see that. Look at him. What is he doing? All right, I'm gonna walk. He's gonna come with me now, guys. <laughs> but anyway, there's, um, we did get to try our first apricot, by the way, ever. On this branch right here, blew me away. There's a video, maybe you guys have seen it. I don't know if it came out before or after this video. Blew me away, guys. Absolutely incredible. Our raspberries are flowering now. That's the first crop. We've also got quite a bit of the new canes coming up and we had dug these up, separated them. I mean, I, they're so resilient, these plants. So I think that's all I wanna show you guys over here. Let's keep moving because I don't wanna make this video too long. We already split this up into two files now. By the way, the, the strawberries are pretty much done fruiting. They gave me a nice little break. The onions are looking good. Remember how I was putting these onions in and multi-sowing them, and you guys were telling me, oh, this is not the way to grow onions. You need one onion per how many inches? Well, it's just not true, because they all are, again, pushing them away from each other and growing in their own little space. And we'll show you guys at harvest time. You want about four or five onions per clump, per cluster. We've also got broccoli we've been harvesting, actually. This is, I think, the fourth head of broccoli that we're gonna harvest pretty soon here, guys. The bumblebee finally flew off my shoulder. The basil, the tomatoes that are growing as a bush, we're letting the bush out. This whole area, by the way, you guys have never seen in quite some time. Look at this. We made this all look nice with some rock. We enclosed the whole thing in to keep out the lawn, guys, keep out my brother. Um, the red currant has harvested. So you guys got to see that little video. And the only issue over here now is this mulberry. We had bark grafted this. It took, one of them broke over here and then this limb 
snapped off. So we're really hoping for this to take or for this cleft graft to take that we just put on very recently. And we do also have black currants coming in. So more to see on that. They're actually pretty damn close to being ripe. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's mostly what I wanted to cover in this, this little video here for you guys, this little update. Um, we have comfrey everywhere, and I think, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I gotta try to make this look nicer and chop and drop this somewhere because it just doesn't look that great. Um, and also, if you put the, the seeds here, the flowers, on the ground somewhere, the following year they come up, they sprout, and this, the comfrey can really spread that way. Uh, but if you're on top of it, you can manage it for sure. But you can see over here, this is actually a nectarine. The first nectarine that I'm gonna try at some point as well. Really beautiful stuff. Excited, excited for that. And yeah, I wanna thank you guys for watching this one. Look at this Rosianca persimmon. It's gonna be loaded with fruit very soon. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you for tomorrow's video.